joining us. I'm also joined here with Hunter Grindle from Hybrid Fitness. Thank you, Hunter, for being here as always. Of course, thank you for having me. So we're actually not in the Hybrid Fitness gym area, but it's a gorgeous day outside. And you know, with gorgeous days that we are, you know, here in Maine are very limited to. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about how you get to take advantage of getting outside and doing your workout out there, using the world as your gym. So running comes to mind. Exactly, yeah, you know, so, you know, like Bethany said, it's, it's getting cold pretty soon here, so let's take advantage of these sunny days, that's yeah. why we're out here, and running is obviously, it requires no equipment, it's a good way to break a little sweat, to burn some calories, and just feel good about, like, hey, I did something today to, to take care of my health, um, and I know there's a lot of runners out there who run right now, and you love it, you love getting that runner's high, but there's things that you can actually do, let's say if you're, you're short on time, and you still want to get a great workout, then you can actually get more benefit from less time in your running. Right? Hmm. So what most people do when they go running, right, is you think you go for this nice steady job. Right. You know, the Keep breeze is going. Keep a good pace so you can make it through to the end. Exactly. And that's great. You know, that's a lot better than not doing anything, but it's still, it's going to help your cardiovascular. You're going to burn calories. But there's a type of training called interval training, which kind of takes jogging, walking, and sprinting brings them all together to give you a different effect. Okay. So let's say instead of jogging steady, there's telephone poles out in front of me. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you could do to, to kind of do an interval workout is I would sprint. So I would go faster than a jog to one telephone pole. I would sprint for two telephone poles. And then once I get to it, I would either do a jog for one or I would do a walk for one. And so by doing that, what you're gonna cause your body to do is get your heart rate up really fast and then when you do the walk or the jog, it's going to bring your heart rate down. So you're constantly kind of picking it up and bringing it back down. Isn't that more effective for like burning fat? Exactly, right. yeah. So it's, it's going to boost your calories that you're burning right now. But also after the workout, what it's going to do is it's going to elevate your metabolism for longer. So your, your body's going to be working harder for longer after that workout. So you're not only burning you know, the amount right now, it's increasing as you go on. And honestly, I find that running, as physical as it is, it is a very mental operation. So mm -hmm. and th we have gorgeous views around here in Maine, so that's something to enjoy um, as you're running. But it kind of sounds like having this, um, you know, objective or this task is kind of distracting as well. You know, mm -hmm. you say, I'll do a sprint, then a jog. You know, you're keeping up with the, the actions that you're doing versus just that steady yeah. one pace. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes when you're doing that city pace, it, it can get boring and it's a big mi mindset thing. But right. if you're focusing on something, you're focusing on counting, you know, whether how, how long your distance is with the telephone poles or whatever that is, maybe focusing on your breathing, which I'll go over in a second, that's gonna take your mind off the, the activity. Right. And before you know it, you're gonna be over, you're gonna be like, hey, I did it. Maybe I liked it. About it. Yeah, yeah, maybe I liked it, maybe I didn't, but it's over, <laughs> it's behind me. So pretty much with breathing, what I like to do, you can kind of to mix it up to, to feel what comfortable, uh, what feels comfortable for you. But basically, let's say you're running, right? Mm -hmm. And and I like to count with my steps. So let's say I would, I'm gonna start out with inhaling for three steps, and then exhaling was two. And you can see how does that feel for me. So one, two, three, and then two. And then you repeat that and you kind of go along and you say, hey, could I sustain this for a long period of time? And if you can't, then maybe you add an exhale for three steps or you add an uh, inhale for four steps. But I would say start with inhale for three and then exhale for two. And that's going to give you a good starting point to focus on your breathing and take your mind off everything else. All right, I think that's all I got for you today, Bethany. Well, I think that's definitely plenty. We don't have many of those gorgeous days left, so take Hunter's advice, take advantage of it, and get on out there. But be sure to stay tuned as well because there's more of Midcoast Today coming up after the break.